Each of these carbonyl groups belong to the family of the carboxylic acid. We call them carboxylic acid derivatives. And in the previous webcast, we learned that we could go from one derivative to another by the process of nucleophilic acyl substitution. We also learned that the direction in which the substitution is favored will depend a lot on the leaving group. We saw that chloride was the best leaving group, making the acid chloride the most reactive of all of these groups. And each one below that is successively lower in its reactivity because the quality of the leaving group becomes poorer and poorer until we get to the carboxylate anion, which if this oxygen left, it would leave as O2 minus. So we see decreasing reactivity from the top to the bottom, and any group that's a higher can be transformed into a lower group by the process of nucleophilic acyl substitution in the favored direction. But what if we were at the bottom and we wanted to transform that group into something that was above it in this reactivity trend? How would we do that? Well, if we're at the very bottom, the possibility of just adding a proton will get us to the carboxylic acid. And from there, there's a special reagent known as thionyl chloride, or SOCl2, whose structure we'll see on the next slide, which is capable of transforming that carboxylic acid into the very reactive acid chloride. Because this is such an important reagent, let's look at the mechanism by which the carboxylic acid is converted into the acid chloride. The overall transformation and balanced stoichiometry is shown at the top. We can recognize this as a type of substitution at a carbonyl carbon. The hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid is replaced with a chloride, that chloride coming from the reagent thionyl chloride. The mechanism by which this overall transformation takes place involves two successive nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. The first of these begins with the oxygen nucleophile that adds into the polarized SO bond of thionyl chloride by an AD sub N step to generate this sphiterionic intermediate that subsequently undergoes a deprotonation. The loss of that proton is what makes the H of the HCl byproduct. That generates this oxyanion, which is ready to do our first beta elimination, and in this case, it kicks out chloride to generate this chloral sulfite derivative and chloride anion. This chloride anion turns around and becomes the nucleophile for the second of the acyl substitution reactions, doing an AD sub N, but now into the carbonyl group to generate the tetrahedral intermediate that's shown here. This is ready to do a beta elimination, but in this case, the beta elimination generates a more complicated set of leaving groups. It's SO2 that's lost and chloride anion that's lost. The chloride anion contributes to the HCl byproduct, and sulfur dioxide is lost as a gas, which, by Le Chatelier's principle, helps to drive this reaction to the side of the very reactive acid chloride. In this series of webcasts, we've learned that the process of nucleophilic acyl substitution is a general mechanism to interconvert carboxylic acid derivatives. With reagents like thionyl chloride, it becomes possible to transform even poor leaving groups like the hydroxyl group into very reactive leaving groups like the chloride.